Hello, hello, and welcome to The Connecting Point. I am Dr. Marcy, your facilitator for this discussion today. This is the place where creators connect to inspire, share their ideas and stories, to transform the world through raw and unedited talk. Now, audience, today, you know, we are already a fool. <laughs> Before we even log on, so I'm just going to go on and tell y'all today, you know, we, we're letting, well, I, we do this all the time, but the Holy Spirit will guide this conversation. Amen. Uh, period. Uh, none of us is God led. And so I, I want to introduce everybody to a friend of mine. Her name is Tawanda Fair. Yes. Welcome, welcome to the Connecting Point, Tawanda. Thank you for having me. I'm overexcited. I'm overdue. Yes, <laughs> you late. are. Because okay. I said, listen, I called her a year ago. Tawanda, didn't I tell you do this a year ago? You did. But you know what? God timing is everything. His timing is everything. And at this at this point, I have gone through some things, some some major traumas. Mm -hmm. But I, I have also overcome those things. Mm -hmm. You know, so with that being said, this is the right time. It's it's the right time. And audience, like I say every week, I gotta tell you the connecting point. <laughs> to one first of all, to wonder is she's a creator, period. That we'll talk more about that later. However, I think I met to wonder, I don't know how many years ago. How old is Quay? Ooh, 31. Okay, Quay 31. She came to me in high school, didn't she? Was it high school? Yeah, I think ninth, tenth grade. Okay, so y'all think y'all do the math. Graduated college twice and now she's about to be an instructor herself. At okay, college. listen. <laughs> y'all do the math. I've been knowing her um that long. <laughs> She and she brought her daughter. Matter of fact, her daughter seek me out. It wasn't even you, was it? Tawana? It wasn't even me. No, her daughter. I didn't even uh, know. I, I uh -uh. didn't know she had found you. <laughs> yeah. Her daughter seek me out for voice lessons. Mm -hmm. And so they, her and her friends came to me for voice lessons. And then her mom started coming too. <laughs> just, sit, just sitting in the living room. Lord, so. I mean, and over the time, over that time, we would talk. Mm -hmm. uh, she looking at my furniture, re up, <laughs> what you, upholstering, upholstering my furniture and my, my piano stools. Okay, <laughs> so we we just became friends, um, and so that I gave you a little hint about what she does. She is an interior designer. She. It, for the people who need it in layman terms, she sold anything. <laughs> okay. I like, this is making it for the people. Yeah. You know, you know we, we, we all that. But yeah. We make it plain. I'm just make it plain. <laughs> so plain. She can sew. Exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> she can sew. That's it. Mm -hmm. But to wonder, you know, I'm excited that you're here. Like I said, I asked her to do this, I know, a year ago. She did. But God's timing, like she said, is accurate mm -hmm. his timing is accurate mm -hmm. and so we're here today to tell a little bit about what she does and who she is matter of fact her testimony because mm. she has a powerful testimony we're gonna mm. start from the beginning to wonder <laughs> girl let's see so i am an interior designer and i'm an interior designer seamstress mm -hmm. So what I do for that, I have a drapery business, a custom drapery business. I have been in this business over 20 years. I worked for a drapery company um, for about 17 years. Mm -hmm. And I um, I was one of the top uh, seamstresses there. Mm -hmm. I had a passion for sewing. I'm a, I, I initially was born and raised and breathed to be um, a designer but a fashion designer mm -hmm. I was really doing clothes at first a tailor but when I got into interior design I just I didn't I didn't have a passion for that no more mm -hmm. clothes anymore my design it changed it went from clothes to interior and I fell in love with this business and I 
get so excited. Marcy will tell you, I get so excited yeah. when I talk about it. When I get to talking about to my clients and talking about what, what we do and how we can do this. Oh, God. I, I get so in left field. They be like, okay, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but okay. But I get, a, I get a joy out of seeing people vision come to light. I get a joy out of being a part of that. You know, what I do, it, it's exciting. You go in people home. I remember I used to go in people home. And I used to say, oh, that is so pretty. Mm -hmm. How do they do that? But then I got a chance to do that when my cousin worked at a daycare. Mm-hmm. Uh, off of, um, Angier over uh, by what well, used to be it's gone now it used to be um, is it Georgia Baptist mm -hmm, yeah Georgia mm -hmm. Baptist Hospital so she used to work at a daycare there and one and one of her colleagues uh, rode the motor bus and it was a lady on the motor bus uh, inquiring um, about someone needing a job mm -hmm. and she was saying that they was looking for someone as a seamstress at her job down the street. Well, of course, my cousin called me. She said, I got to tell you something. She called me Wayne. She said, Wayne, I got to tell you something. She said, this lady was on the motor bus. My, my uh, co-worker was on the bus. And this lady was on the motor bus. And she was asking, did anybody need a job? Because they was hiring. Mm -hmm. She said, I thought about you. She said, so you need to go down there and um, go apply for that job. Well, I called. Mm -hmm. They told me to come in. I went in the next day. I filled my application out. They called me before I can get home good. I had a, a message on my answer machine, literally. Mm. They called me and told me to come in um, to do the interview. And I had to do an interview, uh, a verbal interview where we sit down and talk. And then I had to do an interview, uh, a test, a machine test, mm -hmm. to see how well I can sew. Well, I'm going to be honest. I had never sewn on an industrial machine before. Wow. I was sewing on table. The regular, tops. yeah. So I had never sewn on an industrial machine before. When I got there, I had to do this test. Honey, I prayed my way through that. And when I got on that machine, the lady never knew that I had never worked on an industrial machine before. I had to tell her that. But I didn't tell her that till after I finished mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. she told me I was hired on the spot. Wow. I got hired on the spot. And from that day, to this day right here, my heart is so full with interior design. I want to teach it. Mm -hmm. I want to teach it to everybody. For one, they're not teaching that anymore. No, they're not. We talked about that. They're not. They're mm -hmm. not teaching that anymore in, in school. When I was in high school, I took home economics. And home, I sold in the ninth grade, I was taking advanced so on. Mm -hmm. My teacher at the time, she's passed away now, uh, Miss Grissom. Her sister, I was one of the top seamstresses in, in school, in, in, in Benjamin E. Mays High School. You went to the case. Mm -hmm. I was one of the top seamstresses that they had in the school at their age. So my teacher allowed me to help her make her sister's wedding gown. Wow. I have that picture somewhere. I made my wed I, her wedding gown. That's how I got into making wedding gowns. Mm -hmm. I got into doing weddings all together, uh, bridesmaids dresses. I made my own uh, bridesmaids dresses and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I got into that with just being there and the confidence it gave me to do something on a grand scale, just being in the ninth grade, sewing something on the grand. That gave me the confidence. So I was never really afraid. I already had the confidence anyway because honestly, I was born mm -hmm. uh, sewing. Literally, my dad's side of the family that's where I got all my hand skills and mm -hmm. working with sewing machines and uh fabric upholstery. I didn't want to learn, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> my grandmother, my great grandmother made me learn how to do upholstery, I was forced. But, but you I'm know, afraid. I'm listening to you, <clears throat> and I, I'm so big on passion and purpose. Mm -hmm. And your passion leads you into the purpose mm -hmm. that God had already placed in you anyway. That's right. So I just want to know at what age, I know you said high school, some things started to unfold. What age did you actually 
no, or that you can remember knowing, I like doing this. I like do. I like designing or sewing. Five. Five years old. Yes, ma'am. And I'm gonna tell you, I, I can remember it real clear. My grandmother, my my mom's mom, used to let me play in all her clothes. Mm -hmm. She didn't a good clothes. I used to just dress up, but one day. My, my mom had bought me this doll. I like big dolls. I had so many Barbie dolls. I really didn't like them, but she didn't know that. Mm -hmm. But I had a big doll. You know this doll called a walking I remember. I had, I had one. one of those. <laughs> I had one of those. And so I wanted to make some more, you know, underwear for her and clothes mm -hmm. for her. So my grandmother let me cut up some of her old clothes. My mom, mom did. Mm -hmm. Let me cut up some of her old clothes. I had a needle and some thread. And I made that doll some clothes. So fat. I, I'm I was, doing it because that's important. That's important I was for the five. audience to know. I was five. Five so years I old. Had a passion. I was born soon. And with my grandmother on my father's side, my grandmother and my great grandmother, they that's what they did. That's what they did. That's who they were. And any power tools, um, building things. My dad taught me how to build things. You cut out, cut wood and, you know, put wood mm -hmm. together and how to, my dad taught me that. So my dad, honestly, my dad and I are the only ones that took this, um, this skill as a career. Mm -hmm. And for a while, my dad worked with me at the drapery company that I worked at. He worked with me there for a while and he learned, I actually taught my dad though, how to do something. I taught mm -hmm. him how Hit custom headboards. Wow. Yep. I taught my dad how to make custom headboards. Well, we call people like you art smart. <laughs> you know, I, it's all the they're like nine smart types, and I and they're really multiple intelligences. And you are the one. You're one of the art smart. My daughter's like that. That's how I can I can identify them. Mm -hmm. And so you're over in your that was your passion, which led you over the years. Mm -hmm. Straight into purpose. Yes. And my purpose now is to help someone find their purpose. Mm -hmm. Now I'm teaching it. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to pull out what someone else has inside of them that's already there. Mm -hmm. And let them be able to live and walk in there and identify with that. Because honestly, everybody don't know what their purpose is. And you know that's what I do, don't you, Tawana? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't know. That's that. me. That's part of my calling. And, I, and, listen. And, exactly. And that's something that I feel that God gave yep. me uh, uh, a calling to do that mm -hmm. because you have to have compassion. Yes, you do. You have to be patient. You have to be humble. And you have to have some type of, uh, of fight in you to say, you know what? You got to be tough, too. Yes, you show a little tough love, mm -hmm. you know. So when I when I show people a little tough love, it's love. It's not to to demise anybody. It's not to be condescending. It's not. It's not to do you know embarrass anybody or make people feel shame. Because see that right there, you can use that and turn it around for your good. And you you find who you are in that right there. That's right. I do. Some, I had to do that myself. That's right. You know, especially when you've gone through things in life, when you've had some, whew, some hard knocks. But you know, the hard knocks. Um, when I look back, you you you've even seen to one have been in my house and seen some of them. Yeah. Okay, that's so. <laughs> let me tell you, I just it's totally real here. We talk okay. about everything. It's yeah, nothing we ain't talking so, about. So I'm about. I'm just saying. The hard knocks make you so much stronger. Yes, and, you know, I remember, it's been some years ago, God told me, he said, I need you to see people as I see them, mm -hmm. not as what they have done or actually what they're doing. Because mm -hmm. sometimes they're doing something mm -hmm. that's not right. It could be against you. Mm -hmm. But he told me my assignment was to look beyond that at what he purposed them to be in the first place. And I, over the years, even now, sometimes um, 
as a teacher, some people don't understand my style mm -hmm. and why I operate like I do with certain people that other people might say, oh, don't fool with them. <laughs> They're going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. Why are you, why are you giving them that much choice? Why are you, they have no idea what God told me. That's right. He said, look beyond that to see. Mm -hmm. And yes. if you see yeah. it, pull yeah. it out of them. Mm -hmm. That's that goes into speaking life. I just heard a minister last week say, we don't gossip. We mm. prophesy. <laughs> we speak life. That's right. So when I, 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 that, I welcome I welcome those challenges that I had. Absolutely. You know, um, you know, going through things to I'm gonna tell you something. I'm now um out of a long a lifetime of a marriage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I am I feel amazing. Can yes. you say that? Yes, you have <laughs> you have made that clear. <laughs> I do. I thank God that I had it, you know, I was I was in a marriage and I was very devoted to that. Mm -hmm. But I thank God that in that he made me more devoted to him. Yes. He gave me what I needed to see so that I could see him clearly. Mm -hmm. Not with my blurred eyes, you know. Yes, listen now, blurred vision. Yeah, I need to I needed to see clearly, mm -hmm. you know. So with that, and then from that, my mom, you know, getting really sick. Uh for a year, my mom didn't eat. And with that, my mom has lost her longtime friend that she's been with since, oh God, I can't remember. And um, never expected that to happen. My mom was the one sick, you know. Mm -hmm. She's getting well. She's heading in the right direction. But she had to overcome that because he passed away. Mm. He passed away last August. And we was not expecting that at all. So with that being said, my mom already being sick and that, that was unexpected. We didn't know that was going to take a turn that way. She just took a turn mm -hmm. and me uh, fresh out of a, my long time marriage and starting to work on myself before I got out of the marriage, just working on me and who I am and identifying what that looks like, you know, and having the confidence and the boldness to, you know, just be, be okay with that, you know, and move forward. Then she got so sick. And I was just like, what in the world just happened? I started working on my brand, another dream of mine, which is a brand. So y'all will see Bedroom Peace coming in the future. Mm -hmm. Bedroom Peace is... I'm going to be honest, it is, um, the name came from me being in my marriage. Mm -hmm. And that name came from being in a a place that you didn't want to be in, that you had to find peace in. Mm -hmm. So that name is very, very powerful. It means yes, it so much to me, and I, I feel like people can relate to that. Mm -hmm. You know, being is, I don't care what kind of space it is. If it's a, if it's not a space that's giving you peace, that's giving you joy, that's giving you a, a, a full life of excitement and adding to your life, it's a dark place. It's a dark place. And I know too well about what those. So mm. you know, me to be able to mm. have peace with that. And mm. then my mom gets sick. I didn't have no peace with that. So there I find myself again in a dark place. Mm -hmm. But I still have to tell myself every day, God, I just got to keep pushing. Because if I abide in you, oh, Lord Jesus, okay. and let your word abide in me, I can ask you for anything. Anything. That's right. Anything. You're going to give it to me. Mm -hmm. And I have, God has given me, allowed me, let me say this correctly, 
he has allowed me to take care of my mom. Mm. I've had to move in with my mom and take care of her. But I thank you, God, because guess what? She's getting better. Mm -hmm. My mom didn't eat for a year. On the 18th, they're taking that feeding tube out of her stomach. Look at that. My mom is eating everything that ain't nailed to the floor. <laughs> and she's getting her strength and she's moving around a lot better. So with that being said, I want to be able to encourage somebody to keep pushing. Keep pushing. Don't forget about your dreams. Don't let circumstances in life rob you of what God has given That's you. That's right. And if nobody believe in you, you believe in you. That's right. Because he gave the vision to you anyway. And you know what? You know what God told you. You know, sometimes we get sidetracked mm -hmm. off of what people say we ought to be doing or mm -hmm. who we ought to be with, where we ought to go. Mm -hmm. But there's a, when you are connected to God, mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is the ultimate connecting point. Let me, I'm just going to say that. That's so real. Not Dr. Marcy. No, that's, that's the connecting the point mm -hmm. is God. Mm -hmm. You will not be able to go anywhere, do anything, live, move, or have your being unless you are connected to the soul, the source, the mm -hmm. soul provider. Mm -hmm. Amen. And once you do that, he will tell you. I can't tell you how he going to tell you because mm -hmm. for everybody is different. That's right. But he will tell you what he needs of you. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when, when, when Jesus was getting ready on, on Palm Sunday, he said, go get that donkey. Mm -hmm. I have need of it. Did the donkey kick back? Mm -mm. Was the donkey glamorous? Nope. He said, I have need of it. And so just like that donkey, he has need of each and every one of us and the gift that he has placed in you to solve a problem. That's right. You are here to solve a problem mm -hmm. of some sort. Mm -hmm. And if you don't solve a problem, what are you here for? That's right. So, you know, the, the things that I, I'm glad to wonder talking about and I'm piggybacking off of her is things might not look glamorous. Mm -hmm. They might not feel good. There are different seasons of life. And you hear people use the, the, the same cliche, this, my, this our season. Nobody can really say ours because you don't know what season the other person, That's somebody right. might be in winter when I'm in fall. Mm -hmm. So you have to, the only way you're going to know that is that connecting point that God is my source, staying connected to him. But do know you will, you can, you come out victorious. You're already triumphant. That's right. And it, and when you going through things, you have to remember what it does if you want to now because some people are comfortable being in misery yeah some people are comfortable being in the dark places you know some people have gotten so complacent with that it's a norm for them mm -hmm. well i don't want that to be my i didn't want that to be my norm anymore you know i want it to be better i want it to feel better you know so even things that happen in people's childhood you believe believe me when i tell you Nine times out of ten, when you when you are a certain type of way or you realize something about yourself, just go backwards. Mm -hmm. Start at childhood. Because nine times out of ten, there's something there that planted That's that right. seed there. That's right. So a lot of times we don't want to open up old wounds. That's the problem. Mm. Sometimes you have to open you up the to. wound. You have to go and let that cut, touch that cut, and let it bleed. Mm -hmm. So they can bleed out. Bleed out. Because sometimes so poison is venom in there. It's in there. It's in there. It's trapped in there. It got to come out. So, you know, with me, how I bring that back full circle, or not me, God has brought that back full circle to me to minister and to be able to open up my gifts that he's given me freely 
just fluently just want to be able to bless somebody with my gifts and talents that he's given me. I am now opening up my classes. Mm -hmm. I am now in my classes teaching sewing, not just to youth, young adults, but adults. Mm -hmm. But I focus so much on our youth. That's our future. Mm -hmm. That's our future. So we won't just be learning how to sew. We're going to be learning entrepreneurship. Yes. How to be business owner as young adults, as children. We got little children mm -hmm. that are entrepreneurs. Yes, we do. We want to do that. And, you know, I partner with some young entrepreneurs mm -hmm. to make sure that we're able to do that. And they, you know, they'll come, they're going to do workshops. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to name them. There, uh, you some of you all have probably heard of them, called Kings and Jets. Mm -hmm. They are young men, fine young men, very respectful and mannerable. Their mother, Queenie, is their man. What you call it, Mominger? Mominger. Mm -hmm. That that's what she is. And I'm gonna tell you, I am also uh, a part of a mentoring program in Douglasville mm -hmm. uh, called Rare Pearl. Mm -hmm. mentor program and how I even got connected to that it doesn't matter right now it's beautiful mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing teaching our young ladies how to have self-respect mm -hmm. how, 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 how to be kind mm -hmm. respectful skills of all sorts you know how to have uh Etiquette at a at a dinner table. Mm -hmm. How to talk, how to sit, you know, how to uh, allow people to speak to you respectfully. Right. You know, you want to make sure that these young ladies know what that look like. But we have to be examples too. Yes. yes. We have to walk. By, we have to walk that walk too. You know, so we can't be out here telling them one thing and we displaying doing something, something else. So that, that right. no, we can't do that. So I want to be able to do that with these young young people. So on the 20th of this month, January the 20th, 2024, mm -hmm. I'll be teaching a sip and sew class. Now we do that with the adults. So yeah, we'll do that too. But we're going to start with the children. Mm -hmm. No one is doing a sip and sew with the kids right? because in their mind what you finna have these kids drinking well we drinking uh, alcohol beverages <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we're gonna our first uh, sip and sew is gonna be at a bakery on Thornton Road um, um, this young lady I don't know I seen her on Instagram and she's an African American and I just said I like that I like what she's doing she make amazing cakes and I wanted to see what it looked like in there because I wanted to do a class in there. Mm -hmm. I went over there. I just wanted to see if she would say yes. And she gracefully said yes. Mm -hmm. So I'll do my sip and sew there with my youth. We're going to make pillows. Mm -hmm. And we're going to sip on hot chocolate. And we're going to eat some of her pastries. And I'm going to bring them uh, a snack. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about entrepreneurship after we're done. And that's, you know, um, audience to one. And I have talked uh, extensively about this here. Mm -hmm. um, my audience, most of them don't know because I don't talk about it, mm -hmm. that um, I'm the founder of a nonprofit mm -hmm. um, called Integrative Arts Creations. Mm -hmm. And it's for the children ages five to 17. Mm -hmm. And so um, to Wanda, when she told me her vision, I said, look, this is an easy, easy partnership <laughs> for you and I. So um, we'll talk more about that toward the end of the conversation. But we are in the business of the children mm -hmm. as well, because, you know, we hear it all the time. The children, that's our future. They are. Mm -hmm. You know, I was thinking about sewing, and I, I think I mentioned to you last week, I went to watch Color Purple. Uh -huh. yeah, one you did. thing that I remember 
in the show was Celie's mother taught her a skill. Mm -hmm. And that skill was with a needle and thread, mm -hmm. how to sew. And so Celie went through all this trauma. Mm -hmm. But by the end of the movie, that very skill that her mother taught her to sew launched a business mm -hmm. for Celie. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, these skills like sewing, they seem minute, they seem, you know, small, but they're important. I still remember my mother teaching me how to sew. I know how to sew with a needle and thread. Mm -hmm. I know how to loop, to, to <laughs> lock the stitch. I know how to do all of that. Yep. Because be my mother taught that. me. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. But some of the, our young people today, that's a, like you said earlier, it's a lost art, art form. And we want to equip our children. That can be male or female. Yes. Because, you know, Please you got that. single men, they need not to sew a button back on their shirt now. My son do. Okay. <laughs> so we want to equip them with a skill that can carry them beyond punching a clock. That's right. That's right. That's right. They will have a skill that they can fall back on if the economy doesn't do right. Woo, Jesus. The okay. pandemic. So that's what we are. <laughs> on. brought it out of them all. You know, you know what? We'll say, I'll say this right here about the pandemic. Mm -hmm. 2020 really brought out what God put in everybody. Yes, yes, yes. And honestly, that's why we can't keep people on jobs because people have tapped into their own gifts. That I can say, it allowed people to tap into what's inside of them. Yeah. And now they are boldly, boldly on that. Mm -hmm. And walking off jobs. And they walking off jobs and they <laughs> can't get them to come back. So I say this skill right here will allow people to employ people or allow people to, like myself, pass the torch mm -hmm. and empower somebody else with the gift. That's right. You know, I believe in paying it forward. One thing that I always teach my children and that is to always help somebody. Absolutely. Always. And I can honestly say my children always somewhere helping somebody. Well, you know what? You, we always want uh, God to provide resources or whatnot. But what sense is it made for God to provide resources and you not doing nothing to That's help right. somebody else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God is going to fund his kingdom. Mm -hmm. So if you're not doing anything to help others, why, are, why would you expect him to give you and give you and give you? Mm -hmm. That is not for you to hoard. Our gifts, a gift is just that, is to be given. That's right. So if he as he give it to you, you have to give it to it's somebody else. It's to be else. given. And that's how you, you talk about a generational curse. Let's talk about generational blessings. Yes. Yes. But how do we break, break the curse? We have to pay it forward. We have to give back to break the curse. That's it. In order for us to break the curse, we got to give back to the, the the greatness and the goodness of God, what he put in us so that we can break the curse, y'all. We're not going to be able to do this by ourselves. So if you're anything like me and my sister here, I know in the wee hours of the morning, he wake me up and I'm praying. And that's for real. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this too. When you have your own, when God has allowed you to go out and be a business owner, People think that's easy. It is not. It's not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's not. It's not easy. I'm not going to play with my students about that because I need them to know you got to do the work. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, if you want to be a business owner, you have to put the work in. Absolutely. You can't just hire people and, and, and just say, do this. First of all, you need to know the business that you're in. Uh, because just yeah, like, in other words, you have to you have to make the initial investment. That's right. And, you and that's, you know, 
I know so many people that get frustrated. I don't have the money to do this. What have you invested in, in terms that. of money, in terms of time, talent? Mm -hmm. What have you invested? Not only in your own craft, but somebody else's. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that, that part right there is very, 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 very important. For me to do what I'm doing today, <laughs> people that God has allowed me to meet, and this is so true, people that God has allowed me to meet since I've been divorced. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Marcy, it has been phenomenal. The people, and it's just like so casual. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share something. Someone is helping me right now. Right now. To push this, to get funding, to make sure I have the proper documents. And you will. She's making sure she is the president of a black... <laughs> national television station mm -hmm. and you know what they talk about us sisters us african-american black women don't support one another yes we do i disagree i disagree too i, I disagree. listen here i got some testimonies myself for me to be sitting mm -hmm. on this platform of my mm -hmm. sister right now supporting her and what she's doing She's also supporting me. And that's how it's supposed to be. She's allowing me to speak on what God has given me that I'm putting back into the universe, into the world, my gifts, on her platform. But you know what? It's really, this is not mine. And, and that's what I want people to understand. Um, I've had so many come to me and say, you need to charge people for being a, no, this here is a monument mm -hmm. um, of the goodness of God. And it is a platform mm -hmm. for those God have placed a gift in. That means everybody. Everybody. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm just the conduit to make it happen. I, 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 I'm just here. To make sure it goes forth. Now, I already know. I told to Wanda before she, we came on here. Anybody who graced the platform, mm. they taking off. God Ooh. already told me that. Mm, mm, mm. They taking off, not for Marcy's glory. That's right. It's for God's glory. Mm -hmm. He get all the honor and glory. Yes. Because without him, none of this is possible. None of when none I tell you, none of it. None of this is possible. None Overcoming is not possible. Going through is not possible. And coming out on the other side saying, you know what? I am victorious. Mm -hmm. I went through it. I'm not stuck in it. There's a difference. That's right. It is a difference in being stuck. I don't even want to be stuck in what I'm doing. I want to continue to move. To move. And you will know, this is the thing, um, and I say this all the time, and I want the audience to know, when you are over there in that area where God wants you, that's where continuous joy is. Yes, it is. No matter what the trial mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. you will still have this joy mm -hmm. that passes all understanding. It's like peace. <laughs> That piece, and you know what? That I was telling Marcy, I was telling Marcy this the, uh, the other day when I called her. I was telling her, I said, I have gone through some things, but you don't understand the inner peace I have. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> and when when I said yes, that, I she said, Yes, I do. She said, You know what? I said, You know what? You're right. <laughs> I've witnessed that. <laughs> oh yes, I do know. Listen, face. we just gotta listen. We just gotta be real with ourselves. <laughs> Some right. of this stuff God didn't choose for you. You chose it for you yourself. Chose it for yourself. <laughs> and when you chose it for yourself, God said, "Okay, that's my permissive will. Uh -huh. I'm gonna let them go on through the the motions here, but I got something better." 
Mm -hmm. I got uh, something called my perfect will. Mm -hmm. Once you and humble you, yourself. Yes. And when you, you open your though. perfect will, the perfect will of God, that's when things start moving. But God will let you go over there because he, he, he loves you. You know, you know, like parents. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I give you my permission to go. I know that it's not all the best for you. Mm -hmm. But that perfect will is what I seek after now. Mm -hmm. I don't. Listen, don't. I'm not going permissive anymore. I don't want just permission. I, know that I want God's perfect will yes. for my life and those who I'm connected with. I was just about to say, because one thing about it, everything connects to me. Yeah. It's gonna prosper. It's gonna it's win. Always gonna win. Listen, yeah, we ain't bragging. It's, it's no, true. that's just a fact. Cause it's a fact because of, because of because of who God has has in our heart, who He has become in our heart, who we've allowed Him to be, opening up our heart, our spirit, our soul, our mind, mm -hmm. just surrendering, just giving up our stripping us of ourselves. See, when you're going through all that foolishness, He's stripping it's your stripped. own self. You got to be unidentified mm -hmm. <laughs> so that he could be identified that's right and, and it may sound so cliche but i tell you you try the spirit by the spirit here you better and see what happened because where i'm nowhere where i want to be oh but i'm gonna be more than i could ever more. can't even imagine it i ask god to blow my mind yeah. keep me in my same mind and keep me humble. Because if he do that, mm. I won't get in the way and thinking I did it. That's right. That it was my will. That's that right. it was something that I had to do with. No, I'm moving the way he want me to move because I asked him, God, I'm allowing you to come on in. Now you move me however you want to move me now. I may not like the way you're moving me. I may feel like you're moving me a little too slow for where I'm trying to go. But I know if you doing it. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's and when I get there, it's mine. That's right. And it's it's called it's the irrevocable. It cannot be revoked. It be re not, none of that. Irrevocable. I can't take it from myself. <laughs> I can't even give to somebody else. You gave it to me. So therefore, but you allowed me to go through that, God, so that I could be a good trusted steward over it. That's there you go. Because if you can't trust me, I can't have it because I'm not going to do well. Mm -mm. I'm going to be my, me, I. Mm -mm. I can't do that. That doesn't even sound right. It doesn't. Mm -mm. Honestly, it doesn't. But to selfish people, self-centered people, that does. But when you literally let God take over and control how you treat people, how you talk to people, give you a real conscience and in, in doing that. When if you do something wrong, and I'm not saying I'm perfect because I know I'm alone. That's why I have to keep yeah, praying no, they, so space perfect. all day long because mm -hmm. I'm so imperfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm gonna make some crazy mistakes. I'm gonna do some dumb stuff. I'm gonna say something crazy. You know, I may walk a certain type of way. I may go somewhere I know I have no business being, but you better believe. Because I have surrendered and I teach mm -hmm. you to my children, because you chose him, nothing you do is going to go past him and you don't feel it. That's you, right. You will. You, you may feel like everybody else getting away with doing that, but you're not going to be able to get away with that. You ain't going to be able to get away. Listen. You're going to get caught. That's a whole time. other conversation. <laughs> you ain't going to be able to do it. Listen. Uh -oh. Mm -mm. God has stopped me. Sometimes I say, I'm, fin I'm getting ready to go somewhere. God said, no, you're not. Stay at the house today. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what's that? No, nah, you ain't going. And you'd be surprised later what you hear. <laughs> you'd be surprised later what you hear may have happened. And you said, you know what, God, thank I'm you. I'm glad God. I wasn't there. Yeah, that part right there. I'm glad I wasn't. Well, mm -hmm. to wonder, I want people to know now, um, some things that God has done to show you that you, we got 10 minutes left to mm -hmm. show you that you were in his perfect will. 
Because, listen, I tried not to do some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did. I tried not to. Honestly, I tried to put off holding these classes. I tried to put that off. I found everything in, in my power to say, you know what? I'm not ready. My heart is ready, but my finances ain't ready. I mm -hmm. need some things. Mm -hmm. I need to have this. And I, need, and I said, you know what? I, I'm i telling you, I, didn't, I was like, I'm just not going to launch at the beginning of the year. And I promise y'all, God woke me up after four in the morning. Mm -hmm. He was tired of me whining. He said, just do it. Just do it. Just do and it. I have all that you need. You don't think you have all you but need. But I got it. God but got I it. I got it. Mm -hmm. He got it. And when I tell you walking on faith is a scary thing. Oh, Jesus. It's scary. It's discouraging. I'm just going to keep it real. Yeah, it don't feel good sometimes. It don't feel good at all. But honey, it is necessary. It is rewarding at the end. It is an eye opener. Yes, it is. I am launching my first SIP event. And I am going to have everything that I need. Mm -hmm. He was waiting on you to just decide. I had to put a date to something. Say yes. You had to say yes. Yeah, definitely say yes. God don't. See, that's why what people need to understand. God ain't going to make you do nothing. No, he ain't. He, he's, he gives you a He Ooh, gives you a uh, choice. <laughs> he gives you choice. Mm -hmm. You choose death or life. Mm -hmm. He gives you choice. He ain't going to force you. He just, he, have to he, invites, he invites. He invites. Yes, he does. And you know what? When you when you have that connection with him, scared and all, y'all, I'm scared. When you step out on faith, you don't know how it's going to turn out. Mm -mm. That's the whole purpose of faith. Yes. You don't know how it's going to come. You don't know how you're going to get this. People tell you, oh, girl, you got to make sure you got all your ducks in a row. Well, you never have all your ducks in you a row. You never do. Mm -mm. I don't know who told you that. Mm -mm. That's not true. Mm -mm. That's a myth. It's you, always something to be done. It's always something that has to be done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I have stepped out here. I stepped out with launching my brand. I took the uh, settlement from my divorce and I invested in myself. And when I tell you that's a, I'm living my dreams. Just being able to do that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just being able to get started to to even start a process, mm -hmm. I realize I'm not dreaming it anymore. I'm literally walking in it. You're walking in it, honey. And my dreams are my purpose. Yeah. And they're my gifts. Because God said he will let your gifts make room for you. Yes, he did. And I believe that. And so far, for me to have a drapery business, a custom drapery business, he had made, my gift had made room for me. Well, to Wanda, you know, uh, here recently, God kept bringing up this song to me. And I said, God, why are you bringing up something that old? It, it's a song that I wrote before my daughter was born. Now, my mm. daughter, it, I wasn't even pregnant with my daughter. I think my son was a baby. Mm. My son is now 26, so y'all go figure. Um, that's how <laughs> old it is. Um, and it's a song that I wrote called God Did It. Now, this is the amazing thing about it. I was going through some old papers. I ran across the, after he told me about it, lyrics, I had handwritten them on paper. Wow. I ran across the CD. I actually recorded the song. Mm. But I'm just going to say the words to the song right now. Because I feel it's fitting. It's going to help somebody. 
The words are, for those he ordained, he also justified. For those he justified, he called just the same. For those he called, he predestined to be. Look at you now walking in his glory for mm. all the world to see. And God did it. He mm. gave you a blessing. God did it. He let you walk in your destiny. Mm. Amen. So fly like the wind. Mm. Fly like the wind. I, I mean, I, I'm going to re-record it too. Oh, that would be cool. It's copyrighted, so I, it, that's why I'm going to say what I'm saying, because it, it's just, it's amazing. I, that's what we are now as the body of Christ. He is about to show his glory through mm. his people. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, he, he's showing it, and it looks bad <laughs> right now. <laughs> Yes. That's why I keep saying to people, be careful what you say out of your mouth. You better say that. About any of God's children. You better say that. Woo. Because he about to show you. This is the time of exposure on both ends. I can't agree with you. And more. if you don't know what kind of exposure it is, keep your mouth shut. That's right. Now, I'm, that's all I'm going to say. That's right. <laughs> Listen Amen. to what? I'm going to leave it like That's it right there now. <laughs> That's it. That, yes, that. keep your mouth shut. Do not touch That's God's it. anointing. We're going to sign seal <laughs> on that right there. We're going to listen. And you know what? Let me say this, uh, Marcy, before we go. Um, I really want to encourage people, everybody. I don't care what people say. People will tear you down for what you believe. Mm. people would tear you down for what God gave you and not them. That's right. People would tell you how you can't do it. I've had somebody that told me I wasn't going to be nothing. <laughs> I wasn't going to do this and I wasn't going to be this and I was going to be this and I was going to be this. Mm -mm. Shakayla Carr said, what? <laughs> they tell me I'm this. I tell them I'm not. Okay. When they say I'm not, when they say I ain't that, I tell them, yes, I am that. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do, believe in your own yes. self. Yes. Believe in yourself. Close your ears to the noise mm. in the enemy that lie to you and tell you that you're not good enough. Are you too this? Are you too that? Are you not enough of this? Are you not enough of that? You're not cute. You fat. You skinny. You don't listen. Don't listen to those people. Listen to your heart, and make sure you connect with God, your Creator, for confirmation. That's it. Now that's the list. Those are our points to ponder, audience. We're going to roll out with that. And now we're going to uh, to wonder if you would tell the audience, I told one way um, how they can connect with getting a class from you. Mm -hmm. um, you tell your way and then I come, I'll come. pick back off of you. Okay. So um, uh, my website, I do have a website. Uh, my web design is working on it, but you will be able to go on my website, a touch of class, trf.com. You'll be able to go on my Instagram, a touch of class TRF. You'll see a yellow sofa. That will be me. Mm -hmm. You can go and message me on there. You can message me on Facebook to Wanda, T-W-A-N-D-A, Fair, F-A-I-R. You can message me there. You can message me uh, p uh, by email with a touch of class TRF at gmail.com. Yeah, I hear that. And so you can get any class through through that. You can go to her website. Uh, like she mentioned earlier, she has a class for children coming up on the 20th. So y'all need to go ahead and... Um, on Eventbrite. Uh, you can go to Eventbrite to get it. Or if you need to come through the nonprofit Integrative Arts Creations, you can book it that way. And I will send them to her. So there are many ways you can do that. We just want to get you connected and get your children set up. Absolutely. To transform the world. Definitely um, 
it will it it will be really good and it helps me to see who come through um through the nonprofit. Uh that that would be great. I like to say thank you in advance for signing up your children. And the classes are monthly, so I'll do one uh sip event a month. Um I will also be doing them like pop up shops. Mm -hmm. So we will do them around the metro area of Atlanta. Uh, all over the place. I want to be able to reach every area, you know. So right now we're going to be in Douglasville. Uh, no telling where we're going to be. Uh, we do, um, it's a um, a hair salon for children on Cascade, um, Cascade Road in Atlanta, Fabin Road, actually. Mm -hmm. um, it's called, um, I want to make sure I'm saying it right, Princess Hair and they say and they give and it says pizza at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Uh I've checked in with them and they was inquiring about uh, you know, let me talk about my classes there. But they actually have three locations. They have a location in uh Atlanta over on Fabron Road in Atlanta and they have one in Cumberland, they have one in Stonecrest. So mm -hmm. the one in Stonecrest have a room where I possibly can do a pop up shop there where we can do a class. So I'm gonna check into that. But just know that I will be posting these classes monthly mm -hmm. and I pray that you allow your children to come to a safe place where they would get skills and they would get um, entrepreneurship uh, leadership where they will be able to also uh, let me say this real quick Marcy um, I partner with the Kings and Gents they make bow ties mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're, they're young teenagers uh, I think they're 16 17 17 in that age group um, they actually are looking for a manufactory uh, to make their bow ties now they don't have time to do that anymore that's what happened when you become you know, successful. <laughs> but let me tell you the beauty in that. So what I partner with them and what we're doing is we want the students that come through my class that wants to be an, an entrepreneur, have their own business, uh, being a seamstress. We want to be able to to give that business to their business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what we're doing is we're empowering the children. And these young men teach and they come and do workshops mm -hmm. on entrepreneurship. They will be doing workshops at my school for entrepreneurship. They have a book that you can purchase, um, a paperback book for all that want to be entrepreneurs, whether you... Uh, youth or uh, an elder, mm -hmm. uh, you can purchase this book and it is amazing. I actually met them when they came to Rare Pearl, uh, one of our meetings to do a workshop. And it was amazing how the kids was involved. Well, they that's those are some things that um, you audience, you have the opportunity to connect with. Um, also, I think we did mention your Oh, you're, they can go to you on Facebook. Did you mention that? I yep. didn't you say. Okay. Facebook. So, to Wanda, to Wanda Fair. So <laughs> make sure you connect. Um, and like I say every week, if you want to be a part of this discussion, reach out to me at drmarcyts at gmail.com. Or you can go to the Connected Point for Creators group on Facebook. We'd love to have you. It's a group of creators. It's just a source of networking or promoting or receiving week daily inspiration. Um, the show airs on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. on Instagram TV, um, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. It Also, you can get it on Wednesday nights at Spotify, Anchor, and KBCN TV. All I ask you do is share it so that mm -hmm. others can be inspired. Amen. So Wanda, thank you so much, girl. Thank you so much. For I, I appreciate you. It's always a pleasure. It's always a blessing to be in your presence, to be on your platform. Guess what? We're going to have to do it again. Oh, we, you know we will. <laughs> and now, when we come back, it's going to be on a whole nother level. Ooh, yes, oh, yes, <laughs> 
Well, thank you so much, sis, and you continue to stay blessed and continue to be who you are. And you too. You too.